Greetings Internet! I'm a little late to the party, but I want to give the random clan generation challenge going around the Warrior Cats community a try. For those unaware, the premise of the challenge is to use an online random clan allegiance generator and then draw the clan it gives you, with the option of adding some backstory to the cats. I may have gone a little overboard with the backstory and lore, so this will probably be a multiple part series in the future. But for now, let's start simple with the first clan. Gold Clan. Gold Clan lives in a prairie next to a big rushing river. In the clan, appearances matter quite a lot. Cats who are pretty or popular are favored for positions of power and influence. Additionally, Gold Clan cats like to decorate their nests or themselves with little trinkets they collected. They place very high importance on the sun as a light source. Since the Star Clan equivalent of this clan is called Light Clan, the leader suffix is light in place of star. However, today we are not going to focus on the clan's characteristics, traditions or territory. Instead, I'm going to introduce you to the cats of today's Gold Clan, as dictated by the random clan generator. The leader of Gold Clan is Cold Light. A tom formerly known as Cold Dawn, he bears a rather unusual name, considering the importance placed on the light and warmth of the sun. The reason for this tracks back to Cold Light's mother, who gave him the name Cold Kid after the rest of her litter died soon after birth. Grief-stricken, she attempted to keep Light Clan from taking her last kid as well, with denouncing the sun in his name to distance Cold Kid from Light Clan as much as possible. As a result, Cold Light had a rather difficult upbringing, since his mother's critical views of Light Clan would often fall back on him and consequently drive a wedge between him and his clanmates. One cat, however, would always stand at his side. Lucky Pa, the apprentice slightly older than Cold Pa, took the young one under their wing and the two of them became fast friends. Cold Pa was determined to prove himself loyal to both Gold Clan as well as Light Clan. As time went on, he succeeded to win the trust and admiration of his clanmates at the cost of a good relationship with his mother, earning him the warrior name Cold Dawn to honor the sun and new beginnings. Lucky Fire was there to support him through it all, keeping Cold Dawn's mood up in a similar way they would always be there to cheer up all the clanmates around them. Their optimistic nature and popularity in the clan earned them the place of deputy, balancing out Cold Light's more serious and ambitious character. The healer of the clan is a tom known as Hazelwing, a rather nervous cat who worries a lot about the future. Despite this, Hazelwing works best under high-stress situations. However, he has difficulty calming down afterwards. He decorated the healer's den with colorful flowers and little stones, like his mentor did before him. He is also the brother of Hoot Days. Hoot Days is a senior warrior of Gold Clan. She is quite easily distracted by trivial things and lost in her own thoughts a lot. Additionally, she is the more optimistic and calmer counterpart to Hazelwing's catastrophizing and routinely takes prey to the healer's den for her brother, knowing that he is overworking himself and didn't eat yet. Hoot Days is the mentor of Swallowpaw, who she had a rough start with, since the apprentice was a little taken aback by Hoot Days' chill and unconventional teaching methods. However, after Swallowpa worked out his worries about falling behind his peers with his mentor, he and Hoot Days worked out a teaching method that worked for both of them. Nowadays, Swallowpa is always the first to defend Hoot Days against any cats who would dare to make fun of her. The top hunter of the clan is Goat Creek, a very clever she-cat, who uses her wits to catch prey more effectively and sometimes to pull pranks on clanmates, when she was younger at least. Since she has become a mother of three, she tries to be a bit more serious, to be a better role model for her kids. Still, between her and her maid, Hair Poppy, Goat Creek is definitely the fun mom. In general, Goat Creek is a playful cat, implementing a lot of learning games in her teaching of her apprentice Mitch Park.
Black Blaze is one of Go Clan's most formidable warriors. She's very serious about her work and a standard patrol leader for border patrols. Not so much hunting parties, as she doesn't like hunting all that much. A strong participant in the rivalry between Gold Clan and Ember Clan, considering Ember Clan's more pacifistic route cowardly. Despite all this, Black Blaze is surprisingly gentle with and protective of her four kids. The father of the kids, half prince, and Black Blaze broke up before the kids became apprentices. Black Blaze's rival from her apprentice days is Frecklewind. Nowadays the two are more friends than enemies and have a decent amount of respect for the skill of the other. Frecklewind is a more graceful fighter than Black Blaze, who uses more strength-based tactics. The fluffy she is considered quite pretty by the clan, but doesn't take part in the collection habit of her clan and instead sees more value in skill. Frecklewind could be accused of having way too high standards for a maid. Secretly, she just doesn't want a romantic partner though she hasn't 100% realized that yet. She's an ambitious extrovert and was the one who initiated the rivalry with Black Blaze. Being quite full of herself, Black Blaze has to pack her down a notch from time to time. Frequent hasn't had an apprentice yet and gets a little nervous waiting. Since Go Clan lives in old, dugout fox dens that are prone to cave-ins without upkeep, Go Clan has a subcategory of warriors dedicated to keeping their dens and camps safe. One of these so-called constructors is the Tom Gloomcloud. He's primarily a constructor in dry times, as he's extremely good at hunting in the rain and wet period. He can swim and is one of the few cats that dare to get close to the rushing river in the territory. Considering the danger the river poses, the smartness of this has to be debated. Gloomcloud sometimes gets weird looks from his clanmates for being a bit too friendly with Wave Clan and Silver Clan cats. The Tom tries his best to stay out of conflict leading to him often ignoring his problems until it's too late as a result. The clan's local cinnamon roll is Half Prince. As a sympathetic and helpful Tom, he is the former maid of Black Place and the father of their four kids. It is slightly unclear why Half Prince and Black Place broke up, but they still act civil around each other, and it's theorized that they probably just had too many differences. The second constructor of the clan is Lunacon, a rather lazy individual who just can't be bothered to hunt and needs to be dragged out of his nest to do his job by Gloomcloud frequently. The two constructors, Gloomcloud and Lunacon, are very close friends. Between the two of them, Lunacon is actually the highest authority of the constructors and is actually quite competent at his job, when he tries at least. One of the younger warriors of Gold Clan is Bramble Needle, a usually quiet, but when she does speak, rather snarky cat. Mumbling sarcastic comments under her breath, she would never tell anything negative directly to your face, but judges others with word, quote unquote, said to herself. Despite seeming very harsh in her judgment of others, she rarely means to be mean. The thought of uttering her positive opinions of others just rarely crosses her mind since Bramble Needle is under the false impression that the cats around her are all already aware of their own self-worth and don't need her reinforcement. She is an endless pessimist and the mentor to her first apprentice, Echoing Pa. The youngest warrior of the clan, Green Petal, was formerly a loner, having joined the clan around apprentice age. She joined Gold Clan after having a dream about it, thus her clan name. Green Petal silently waits for some kind of big prophecy about her from Light Clan. Imagining that there has to be a bigger reason as to why she was sent to Gold Clan, she is quick to spring into action and considered exceptionally pretty by her clanmates, leading to several apprentices having a crush on her. Dream Petal herself is oblivious to this and would never think that a cat could be nice to her because of her looks. 
Moving on to the nursery. The oldest of the queens is Rocky, a reasonable cat who stayed in the nursery after her own kids, Flying Paw and Swallow Paw, were old enough to be apprenticed, to have black place with a litter of four. A little later, a fellow queen, Sea Lily, also had a big litter, and considering that she lost her mate, Rocky extended her stay in the nursery a second time to help. Rocky and Sea Lily are good friends and have formed a sort of sisterly relationship while caring for the kids together. In most of her relationships, Rocky is the mom friend, taking care of others and helping them solve their problems. She is less good at taking care of her own problems though. The father of her kids is a kitty pet that Rocky usually doesn't talk much about. Sea Lily tries her best to act all happy and positive around other cats, despite the loss of her mate. She finds a lot of joy in the little things in life, taking walks with her good friend Dream Petal, admiring the nature and the territory, when she gets a break from parenting from time to time. Sea Lily is the mother of Kestrel Kid, Vapor Kid, Low Kid and Mumble Kid, and tends to spoil her kids a bit too much. Rocket tries her best to intervene and teach the kids some humbleness. The last queen of gold clan is Hair Poppy. She is usually a bit of a workaholic and helps with the duties of the constructors while stuck in camp, despite currently nursing kids. By doing this, she found out that she really liked the job and considers switching to constructor duty instead of returning to normal warrior's duties once the kids are old enough. Hair Poppy can be relatively awkward in normal free time activities. Her mate Gold Creek tries her best to get her to loosen up a bit though. The queen probably has slight social anxiety, but isn't necessarily shy but she likes to take cats that she trusts with her into conversations to feel more comfortable. Hair Poppy is the mother of Sneeze Kit, Quick Kit and Burning Kit. The currently only resident of the Elderstone is Colette's very light clan, critical mother Gravelweed. Most of the clan disagrees with her negative views on light clan, but they have more or less grown accustomed to just ignoring it now that she is an elder. Gravelweed got her scars while on a hunt with Lucky Fire at a time when both Day and Cold Dawn were still warriors. Lucky Fire and Gravelweed started to argue about Cold Dawn. Gravelweed, feeling like Lucky Fire, contributed to Cold Dawn distancing himself from his mother, but Lucky Fire accuses Gravelweed, adamantness about talking bad about Light Clan, of damaging Cold Dawn's chances and relationships in the clan. The arguing gets too loud and attracts a hyena. While fighting for their lives against the hyena, Lucky Fire saves Gravelweed and stands by her side as a good clanmate should. However, both are left with permanent scarring afterwards. There are a lot of apprentices in Gold Clan, the oldest one being the siblings Flying Paw and Swallow Paw. Flying Paw is an extremely talkative and loud cat, boasting about their successes or going on long tangents while things were unfair or out of their control when they failed. They tend to unintentionally cut other cats off, only to realize and apologize profusely. They are by far the biggest danger to spilling clan secrets at gatherings and are therefore often ordered to keep at their mentor half-princess or another warrior's side, so they can keep an eye on them. Their brother Swallowpaw used to place extremely high expectations in himself and the cats around him, including Flying Paw. As kids, Swallowpaw always needed to decide what to play and demanded a lot of attention, unintentionally leaving Flying Paw in his shadow. Swallowpaw, however, is growing out of this attitude, partially due to learning to appreciate his less ambitious focused mentor hoot days. Instead, Swallowpaw now gets increasingly protective of the achievements of the cats close to him, to compensate his past behavior. Flying Paw, in turn, got his loud character as an apprentice, in part to finally get their share of the intention. Swallowpaw's best friend is a slightly younger apprentice called Mitchpaw, a tom with a weird obsession with insects, something Swallowpaw used to tease him about but actually finds quite endearing. Mitchpaw is rather talkative and always has random fun facts to share. The trio of Swallowpaw, Flyingpaw and Mitchpaw usually spend their time with the latter two talking over each other in at an increasingly rising volume, while Swallowpaw is listening in the middle of the two. All three very much enjoy this arrangement to the confusion and detriment of the cats around them. One of Mitch Paw's three siblings is Bubbling Paw, a quiet, shy Tom who likes to spend time in the healer's den with his brother Coyote Paw and picking up a bit about herbs along the way. His fighting and hunting skills are rather mediocre, something he got made fun of by Swallow Paw quite a bit, leading to a great dislike for Mitch Paw, who would hang out with Swallow Paw despite this. Bubbling Paw tends to imagine results without actually trying things, a habit his siblings try to get him to quit, which mostly just ends in them arguing again.
The medicine cat apprentice is Coyote Pa. His mentor Hazelwing's nervousness sometimes gets to him a bit, which is why he enjoys Hoot Daisy's calming presence a lot when she visits the healer's den. Outside those few moments, Coyote Pa is usually very firm in his behavior and confident in his skills. He talks to his mentor more like a colleague that he can learn from than a mentor, coming off as a bit arrogant from time to time due to his lack of shyness towards authority figures. Coyote Pa would definitely speak up at gatherings like he owns the place if he felt the need to. His siblings like to tease him about his ego in good fun. The last of the four siblings is Echoing Pa. She is the youngest of the litter and sees herself as the link keeping her family together, being close to both her parents and all her siblings. She gets very insecure when she feels like her family and friends don't tell her things or don't trust her with their problems. Since she wants to be the cat everyone can confide in, but is unsure how to achieve this. She quickly feels useless when people don't talk to her. Her mentor Bramble Needle isn't too good for Echoing Pa's confidence and tries to make steps to help her with her overall reliance on being needed by others. The success is questionable. Last but not least, let's quickly go over the kids of the clan, starting with Kestrel Kid. A sweet, innocent, well-behaved kitten. At least, she looks like it. None of the adults would believe a kid if they told them that Kestrel Kid was mean or pulled a prank on them. Kestrel Kid's sister, Vapor Kid, however, is a known troublemaker in the clan. A big fan of ghost stories and a master of stealth, Vapor Kid loves to sneak up and scare other kids, and sometimes apprentices, to their embarrassment. Kestrel Kid, Vapor Kid and their two brothers are Sea Lily's kids and Vapor Kid inherited her name from her deceased father for her likeness to him. One of Sea Lily's two Tom kids is Low Kid, a very matter-of-factly quiet and pragmatic cat who gets told to act more childlike quite a bit. The last in the litter of four is Mumble Kid, who routinely gets dragged into trouble by Vapor Kid. He follows his sister nearly everywhere and is a bit gullible, but got surprisingly good at lying or covering up Vapor Kid's shenanigans. Hair Poppy and Goat Creek have three kids. Firstly, Sneeze Kid, a not very adventurous Molly that loves good smelling herbs and plants with a great distaste for mud or dirt. She likes to listen to stories and is Kestrel Kid's main pranking victim. Her brother Quick Kid is very unforgiving and dramatic. He possibly has an enemies and friends list. The last of the three is Burning Kid, an easily excitable Tom who loves when someone brings him little trinkets from patrols. He owns a big pebble and feather collection. And that brings us to the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed watching. Also, yes, I'm aware that the cat genetics in the video are all over the place, but the books have never cared about them, so I don't have to either. Anyways, see ya!